experiment on determination of hardness of water. The main aims of this lab are to determine the hardness of the water sample using an EDTA titration and to learn and practice quantitative technique for determining the concentration of solutions. Hardness of water is due to the presence of calcium or magnesium ion in water. In real life, we might see hard water in the form of water pipes, poor rattling of soap or scum. The hard water also contains anion, for example, carbonate ions, bicarbonate ions, sulfate ion or chloride ion. From these ions, it can classify hardness into two categories, temporary hardness and permanent hardness, or carbonate hardness and non-carbonate hardness. Temporary hardness is due to the presence of bicarbonate together with calcium and magnesium ion. This type of hardness can be removed by either heating or adding calcium hydroxide, leading to the precipitation reaction of calcium carbonate. A simple example of temporary hardness is the deposition of calcium carbonate skull inside the kettle. Permanent hardness is caused by the presence of calcium together with other non-carbonates such as sulfate or chloride ion. Calcium sulfate or magnesium sulfate do not precipitate out as temperature increases, so the permanent hardness cannot be removed by boiling. It can be removed using a water softener or ion exchange column. Hardness of water is usually expressed in the term of equivalent quantity of calcium carbonate in milligram per liter or ppm, which stands for part per million. For example, water hardness of 100 ppm means 100 milligram per liter of calcium carbonate or 0.1 gram per liter of calcium carbonate in water. Here is the general guideline for classification of water. For example, water with hardness of 0 to 75 ppm is defined as slightly hard. Experiment today, students will have to report and classify the hardness of an unknown water. Water hardness can be determined by titration with the EDTA, which is stand for ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. This reagent is normally used in the form of disodium salt. EDTA can react with calcium or magnesium ion in the basic solution to form a water soluble complex. EDTA disodium salt is present as H2Y ion. When it reacts with magnesium ion or calcium ion, the equation is as following. It can be concluded that the reaction of EDTA and metal ion is 1 to 1 mole ratio. Since the EDTA, calcium ion and complex are colorless, hence a special indicator needs to find out to detect the endpoint of this titration. It is found that oreochrome back tea is worth to use as an indicator. In basic solution, oreochrome back tea lost two protons, presenting mostly in the form of sky blue color. In the presence of magnesium ion, this indicator will form a stable wine red complex of MAC-IN. As EDTA is added, 
it will react with free calcium or magnesium ion, leaving Mac in complex alone until no more free calcium ion left in the solution. The EDTA will react with magnesium in Mac in complex. An indicator reverts to an acid form H in, which is sky blue. So the color of the solution now will change from wine red to violet, but it is not the end point yet. Till the Mac in complex is completely react with the EDTA, then sky blue appear. So the end point of the titration is observed by color change from wine red to sky blue. Since hydronium ion is formed during titration, buffer solution is added to control the reaction at pH 10. Titration technique will be used in this lab. It will be the reaction between calcium or magnesium ion in olimeyer flask and EDTA in the burette. Although there are three sections in this experiment, the burette contains EDTA in all sections. The olimeyer flask will be prepared differently as follows. In section 1, blank titration, the reason to do this experiment is since indicator require a trace of magnesium ion to operate properly. The amount of magnesium ion from magnesium chloride is added in all titration, but EDTA also reacts with this magnesium ion, so this amount of EDTA is needed to calibrate by blank titration. Section 2. EDTA is a secondary standard, so it needs to standardize with primary standard calcium carbonate. Section 3 is the aim of the experiment today. Determination of water hardness. Each section the amount of indicator, magnesium chloride, and buffer are the same, but pipetting solution depend on section. Section 1, Blank Titration Pipette 10 ml of distilled water and transfer in early major flask. Then add 8 drops of magnesium chloride. Add 1 drop of indicator. A wine red solution will be observed. When titration is ready, Add 3 ml of buffer into the flask. Titrate until the end point which the wine red solution turns to sky blue solution. Then record the volume of EDTA as blank. Repeat titration on the second and third flask. In section 2, standardization of EDTA solution. Do the same thing as section 1, 
but replace this t water by calcium carbonate solution, which is primary standard. Section 3. Determination of water hardness. Do the same as in Section 1, but replace the distilled water to water sample. After titration or solution, it's placed in the container in the hood. Calculation. Section 2. Standardization of EDTA is aimed to get exact concentration of EDTA by titrating with primary standard calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate have concentration of 0.2 gram per liter and used for titration 10 ml. The molecular weight of calcium carbonate is calcium is 40 plus carbon is 12 plus 3 of 16. So it is equal to 100 gram per mole. This molecular weight can change from gram into two mole. So now we use this relationship to calculate the concentration or the mole of EDTA by start with calcium carbonate solution 1000 ml contain calcium carbonate 0 0.2 grams so after divide by molecular weight we get mole the solution use only 10 ml so it will have calcium carbonate of 0 0.2 times 10 divided by 100 times 1000. So it is about 2 times 10 to minus 6 mole. From the reaction of calcium and EDTA, it react mole by mole. So this means that EDTA from this titration is about 2 times 10 to minus 6 mole. After titration and get the sky blue color, if we get the volume of EDTA from the billet at the end point after subtraction with the blank is XML. So right now we have EDTA about 2 times 10 to minus 6 mole. With this one, we can extrapolate to get concentration of EDTA by write down EDTA XML contain EDTA of 2 times 10 to minus 6 mole and extrapolate to 1000 to get a molar. So we can have 2 times 10 to minus 6 times 1000 divided by x. For example, in this case, after calculation, we get the concentration of ETA a molar. So with this concentration, we can determine in section 3 is determination of water hardness. So we get sample of 10 ml by pipetting and the concentration from standardization is a molar. From the titration, if we get the volume of EDTA after subtraction is YML. From this relationship, we can find out the calcium ion or calcium carbonate in the sample while writing down EDTA 
1000 ml from here we have EDTA of a mole in the titration we use EDTA only y ml so we have EDTA of a times y divided by 1000 mole ah. with the this mole of EDTA we can transfer to calcium carbonate because it react mole by mole so we have sample sample water having calcium carbonate of a times y divided by 1000 mole from here we can find out the milligram per liter of calcium carbonate in sample by writing down of sample 10 ml having calcium carbonate of A times Y divided by 1000 mole. From this mole we can transfer to gram by times kilo weight 1000 gram per mole. So mole is crossed out so we get A times Y divided by 1000 times 100 gram. So from gram we transfer to milligram by times with 1000 milligram per gram. So the gram is crossed out so we get A times Y divided by 1000 times 100 times 1000. This means it's 10 ml of sample having calcium carbonate of milligram. So we find out in milligram per liter, so we extrapolate to 1000 ml. We have calcium carbonate in sample of equal to A times Y divided by 1000 times 100 times 1000 and times 1000 divided by 10. So this is milligram. Milligram in 1000 ml, it means milligram per liter. So we get B. So the unknown sample having calcium carbonate of B milligram per liter. So we have to compare for classification of the hardness in the unknown sample. For example, if it's less than 75, so it's slightly hard. If it's more than 300 milligram per liter, it classify as very hard water.